Welcome to Image Processing with ArcGIS Pro. 12 YouTube videos summarize image processing lab exercises available in a step-by-step -step lab manual that accompanies this textbook. Download the lab manuals at the site shown and obtain more textbook information at the second site shown publisher's website. Download the lab manual and data used in the lab exercises if you want to use the step-by-step -step instructions and process the imagery and DEMs while viewing the YouTube videos. The examples used in the videos and lab manual are discussed and shown in the textbook, improving GIS student understanding of essential remote sensing principles and technology while learning how to process and enhance images and DEMs using ArcGIS Pro. The lab manual, shown, a page is shown in the upper right, and 12 YouTube videos are designed for GIS instructors, students, and users who want to do their own processing, enhancement, and information extraction of satellite and airborne images and DEMs using ArcGIS Pro. You can see the 12 exercises, the tutorials um, listed here. They cover um, a broad range of image processing tasks, algorithms, and help you find where these tasks are located on the various menus in ArcGIS Pro. The lab exercises require ArcGIS Spatial Analyst Extension. Contact Jealous at ls-geospatial.com for any questions or comments and visit the publisher's website for more information and resources on the textbook. Welcome to Lab 1, an overview of ArcGIS Pro menus and tools for image processing and remote sensing. Here we're looking at the startup layout of GUI, the graphical user interface. On the left side you can see the contents. In the center we have the view with the map and you can make different tabs for this, different layers of maps and layouts. And on the right side is the catalog showing this image that we can show the location that we can drag into the, the view. And you can see it's already over in the contents. This right panel is actually a series of menus and tools that you can dock and undock. So symbology, export raster, go back to catalog. This overview follows lab manual that's available at the Waveland website for download. And so you can see the many tools and menus that we review in the lab. And then we just go off and, and start crunching through and step by step showing where things are. So let's first look at the raster layer properties menu. So when this is highlighted, notice this tab shows up and ribbons show up that are for raster layers. Okay, so I'll right click on this and you can see large number of functions. Um, zoom to layer is a key one we'll use. Symbology is essential. You can get to symbology different paths. This is one of the paths. Over here data, which is important to export rasters so we can make GIS ready images. And then down here properties. We'll click on properties and we'll just focus on the, the source. So notice um, we start off with raster information and it gives you some really good metadata, raster data file itself. But statistics, very important that you see if statistics are calculated prior to working an image. You really need the statistics calculated. We'll see how that's done different ways. And then the spatial reference, which is the coordinates that each pixel in the image is located in. Another tool over here is when you click on the blue, the options, and you can see we'll look at, we're in the options, raster and imagery, appearance. This is the default, so you can set this up. If there's three band data, it's going to load one, two, three. But if you know your data comes in in the order of three, two, one, so band three is actually red, and band two is green, and band one is blue, you, you can reverse these. The rendering, very important. If you're doing an examination of single pixels, you want to set it to nearest neighbor in the ribbon on the, the menu. But routinely you can pick bilinear or cubic, which gives a, a smoother rendition of the image. I always pick the stretch type is none, so I can see what the image looks like when it comes in. And these are the default standard deviation and percent clip for the uh, histograms. We click down and we had metadata with this in these formats, it would show up. OK, 
cancel this and let's explore the ribbon you can see because we've highlighted a file in the contents it automatically brings up the ribbon that's appropriate and in this case it's a raster layer so we're going to move over to the first tab map and just look at it navigate the explore tells you how to, to get around the image full extent the blue arrows are very handy so if I zoom in like this it'll take me back to the original setting and we go to this group called the layers and this is where we can bring in the from ArcGIS online these really remarkable backdrop maps and also here <laughs> how to add data there's different ways you can add data as we noted before you can drag it in from the catalog but this is another way go to the insert tab there's more um, tools here I'm just not going to cover these I'm going to focus on tools that are used for image processing the insert is very handy a new map so we can load a new map it's saved in the project file and and load a different image or whatever we want into that we in addition can create a new layout in this same project you see you can choose all sorts of um, sizes of the paper let's say for for what you're trying to, to map and it, it comes up layout when I touch the layout notice we get different menus coming up north arrow scale buyer it's really a good way to take anything that's in a map and turn it into something that you can print with a scale bar go to analysis so I'll close turn these off notice what happens when I I turn them off because they're in my system if I go to maps it's retained here so even if I accidentally click this X they're retained in my catalog so analysis is another important tab the tools is in the geoprocessing and it's these toolboxes that we'll look at really important in a little bit and then the other one is the raster functions way over here they're really powerful you can see there's there's different ready-made tools for you to use in the raster functions most of these make virtual images we'll go to view as important thing here is the length of view so if you have several views open you can center center and scale and zoom and pan around together it's it's very powerful for comparing different layers different images and maps the edit you can see that because we have a raster one there's not much here but we can create a new feature in the old days it was called a shape file now they're called features especially if they go into the geo database and then imagery is a key tab and one that we can um, look at is over here on image information you can see what happens when I pan across these pixels it's a three banded image and it's giving me the spectral response the reflectance the brightness of each of these pixels so when I I hit this bright green irrigated patch you can see it's very high on the right side I go over here to the white they're all pretty high I go into this geological formation that looks reddish and you can see that's what we see in the digital numbers for each band so alignment is an important set of tools for georeferencing we've got image classification all these classification tools are here process these are like shortcuts to the clip mask do a difference between two images the indices again another shortcut to to get to say you want to look at iron oxide in this image that we're looking at now you can just click this and and go through and fill in the blanks essentially and then finally share and the one I'll be using is you just export a map out which is a quick way to save like a JPEG of your layout now we'll go to the raster layer and on the appearance the important thing here is symbology again RGB if I touch this you'll see it comes up on the right side and we can undock this and float it out in another area the stretch type that we're going to use with this image there's none and I'll do a standard deviation you can see the the change I'll go to none and percent clip 
which is 2% on each end. We'll, we'll look at that a little later in the enhancement lab. The effects are also very important. Let's say that I have an image underneath here. I'm turning on the streaming hillshade and we can see through and see how our image compares to the image on top compares to the one on the bottom. Um, you've got a swipe tool and then the rendering really important this is that resampling so if I zoomed in you would see the well we'll zoom in we'll see the blockiness of nearest neighbor whereas if I pick by linear you see it really smooths out the image which makes it more pleasing and maybe even more informative to to use for interpretation but if you're actually going to look, look at individual pixels you want to have the uh, nearest neighbor and band combinations this is a three banded image and it gives you different options to to change band combinations here also you can do it over in the symbology now if I go to data export raster we do it different ways remember we right click here data export raster or you can do it on this menu and then you can also create all sorts of charts so let's look at the toolboxes we go over to geoprocessing and we'll look at the toolboxes and the first one is conversion tools from raster say raster to polygon and so you input the raster say what field are you going to use for converting to keep and then um, what's the name of the output and you simplify if your computer can't handle large data sets but it's much better to unclick this I go back another key set is data management tools and we go down to projections and transformations and we click on the raster you can see all the things you can do in this flip an image shift it warp it which is really important just to get it in the correct location and then there's another underneath the data management let's say the raster data set you can mosaic raster processing clip here remember we saw a clip earlier composite bands into a multiple layer data set and raster properties and this is one place that you can calculate statistics we'll close these and then go all the way down to spatial analyst tools you require the spatial analyst extension to do the labs and so one that's interesting is multivariate and here's where we're doing our spectral classification and principal components and another one is say surface this duplicates what we see in 3d analysts but it's really important for creating hill shade from DEMs or contouring zoom to layer and with that we'll just complete this overview of the lab one